Well, if you're there in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, the part of the scripture that I want to focus on is verse 11. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 3. And the verse 11 reads, For other foundation can no man lay, and that is laid, which is Christ, which is Jesus Christ. And so the title of my message today is Weaned Off the Spiritual Milk in 2019. Weaned Off the Spiritual Milk in 2019. And what I mean by that is, you know, I don't think that there's anybody, I'm, this is not a, this is just a general, uh, generalization to start off the year. You know, we're in the second day of the year, we finally made it to 2019. Uh, at points in 2018, it felt like uh, we might not ever get to 2019. Those days just kept getting longer and the months kept getting... But at the end of it all, we were here and it, I think it's appropriate. Last year, the, uh, the, year, the first sermon of the year was like on the 7th of January. But for us this year, it's on the 2nd of January. It's just a, the way the calendars worked out. But uh, if you... Uh, the, the goal of today's message is, you know, a lot of people plan and they write goals or they have New Year's resolutions. Uh, they do a lot of soul searching or they look at the previous year the and one of the things that I've learned over the years especially now that I've gotten older is you know I've tried every single method probably known to man to prepare for the new year you know you 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 have your calendars and you have your uh, goals and you have your seven steps to success and whatever because being in business that's one of the things that you do is you write a ton of goals but the one thing that I've learned and, and you were gonna see that in the Bible is keep it simple but the big thing that I, I think I want to encourage us as believers is that we, we should focus on weaning ourselves off certain spiritual milk. And what I mean by that is I don't think that, uh, uh, you know, in a congregation like ours, especially with those who are here on a Wednesday, you know, Wednesday cr the Wednesday crew is always usually the, the crew that's looking for the meat. You know, you got your Sunday morning believers. Those are the ones that, are, that probably most of them have stayed in the spiritual milk for a long time in, in most subjects, most doctrines. Then you got the Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and, and they're a little bit more uh, well versed, but they don't show up on Wednesdays. And then you got the Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and uh, and then the Wednesday crowd. And those are the that's the crowd that's usually you know they're 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 looking to thrive, as people have said, three to thrive, or they're looking for the word. And and the focus today is not that anybody specifically is on uh, uh, they have the milk of the word. But there are things in our life, spiritually, where we still are in the milk. And, and what I mean by that is we, we, we might be really good in the meat. Have you ever met those? You know, Seventh-day Adventists are, are, are infamous for that. They have a lot of meat when it comes to end times prophecy. And it seems like a lot of false religions are really good at wanting to go into Revelation and Daniel and just talk about the end times and the end times and the end times. And then you get your feel happy or your happy Jesus crowd, and all they want to talk about is, you know, just believe on the Lord, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And, it, and, and then they skipped all the other parts of the Bible, the parts that talk about strong doctrine and, and uh, strong spiritual meat that, that will help us grow in our word so that we can reap more fruit. And so if we look there, let's go to 1 Corinthians, and let's just read the first part right there in, a, in, a, in a 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1. And it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So Paul's saying, look, I can't even talk to you in, in the spiritual sense because you're still in the carnal in a lot of respects. He says, but I have, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. And so he's conscious and he's vigilant and he's wise enough to notice that there's people that he can't even preach the hard stuff because they're so carnal that the hard stuff would only offend them and it wouldn't help them grow. And, and uh, it says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and here's the, here's the spiritual meat, right? You're in the, you're in the flesh, envying, I mean uh, milk, envying and strife and divisions, are ye, uh, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? And, and so the thing here is that there's envy and there's strife and there's division because they're in the flesh. And then they're picking sides or picking teams. They're saying it's Apollos 
or, or uh, Paul. And usually, you know, I preach the message similar to, the, well, not similar, because it's completely different, but I preach the message on soul winning based on these scriptures about how, you know, it's God that gives the increase. But the other thing that you can glean from this is that they're saying, look, you're, you're, you're focused on the wrong thing because you don't have the word of God. You know, really, if we, when we come down to it, how do we wean ourselves off the thing? When we look to Christ as our only source of authority, when we look to God as the only authority for how we conduct our life, then we're weaning ourselves off the spiritual meat and into the, I mean, the spiritual milk and into the meat, right? Because what happens when you first start going to church, you get saved, man, the, the preacher gets up there and he says some stuff and you've never seen it in, in, in the Bible or you haven't read the Bible that much. You're like, man, this guy knows a lot. And what you end up realizing, though, is that when you read the Word, God will open the Word up to you, and you're going to see things that maybe even the pastor hasn't seen. You know, we have to be weaning ourselves constantly in certain spiritual ways so that there is no envying, so that there is no strife, and specifically so there is no divisions. Because we, when we walk in the, in the flesh, these are the things that are manifest among us. So what is it to wean? Because, you know, I, I heard that all my life, but I really wanted to make sure I had the definition correctly. You know, to wean is... To accustom and reconcile, you know, as a child or other young animal to want or deprivation of the breast. So the, we use that wean off the teeth is what it's trying to say is, look, we're going to get you unaccustomed to what you're accustomed to, which is all you want is to be fed and babied and, and cuddled and held and, and everything's done for you. We change your diapers and we feed you your food and we're going to wean you off of that into a young child and then a young adult and eventually an adult, meaning we're going to accustom you to being independent, which is interesting because the whole thing between a bat, uh, for Baptists, especially strong Baptists, is that we are independent. You know, we may look to others for counsel. We may look to others for, uh, you know, guidance. But at the end of the day, uh, independent churches are based on biblical principles that they've learned. And each one is specific to their region and their time and everything. Uh, another definition, you know, used as a verb, it just says to accustom a child to food other than its mother's milk, cause to lose the need to suckle or turn the mother for food, to withdraw. So what we're, we're weaning off, we're withdrawing from the carnal, we're withdrawing from the envying and the strife and the divisions so that we can walk in the spirit so that we may allow the Lord to give us the increase. But, go, you know, don't turn, uh, go ahead and turn a, uh, Romans 7, and I'll just read for you uh, First Corinth, I mean Isaiah 28, 9. It says, whom shall, he teach, uh, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And so one of the things that you know, these aren't here necessarily the points, but one of the things that we should do in 2019 is how do you wean off uh, the carnal? How do you get into the spiritual, you know, and off the spiritual milk and into the spiritual meat? You know, you get in the word, precept upon precept, you know, tittle upon tittle. Uh, is it, did I say tittle? Yeah. Uh, or here a little and there a little. I'm sorry. But, you know, we've heard that before. But go to, uh, you're in Romans, but there in Psalm 131, let me just read for you real quick. It's just three verses. It says, a song, a degree of David, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned off his mother, my soul even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. And so the thing that, that we see here is that the only way to continue to grow and, and, and be a child of God, not a baby in God, not a babe in God, but a child. Because Christ wants us, we're always going to be his children. You know, I think that's why John 1, 12 is so great. Because I don't know that there's ever going to be a point, maybe even in all eternity, that we could ever match Christ or God Almighty, right? I mean, he's eternal doesn't have any beginning, doesn't have any end, eternal, everlasting from everlasting. How even us in our eternal state, after millennium and millennium of living, will have the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience that Christ and God and the Holy Spirit have? We don't. We just, we're, we're created beings. God created everything. You know, I'm doing, it's the beginning of the year, and one of the things that I'm focusing on is I'm going to go through each one of the chapters in the Bible. I probably won't get through it this year because I'm going to go through each chapter and just kind of 
break down every verse and look at things, and you, the very first thing you see is in the beginning, which gives us an understanding that God created us. And so something existed before the beginning. Before our beginning, God existed. And so we'll, we'll never be there. So we're always going to be his children. I didn't mean to go there, but let's go to Romans 7. And there, you look in verse 14. And before we do that, let me just read to you. We, we're looking at the spiritual, because we want to be, uh, I, brother, could not speak unto you spiritual. So see, when, when Pastor Cobb or myself or any other preacher gets up here, he should be able to speak unto you as spiritual. The challenge is, is if you're still carnal, if you're not weaning yourself off the spiritual milk, you know, if you're in the spiritual milk, when you're new to Christ, the thing that you're most susceptible to is the flesh. You know, it's, it's the wind of doctrine, is the things that people could come and, and, and knock you off. But when you're in the, in the meat, then the carnal becomes less and less important. And, and then you're less susceptible to the attacks or the fiery darts of the devil. But let's read there in Romans 7, 14. Let's compare the carnal with the spiritual. And the Bible actually tells us to compare spiritual with spiritual. But what I'm doing here is a, a contrast of what it is to be in the, in the flesh versus what to be in the spirit. It says in Romans 7, 14, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. And that's the constant struggle we're going to live with the rest of our lives. It'll get better, but then there's times where it just feels like it just got really bad, even though you've improved, right? It says in verse 16, it says, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then it is, more, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I, would, uh, that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, that I would not, it is no more I that do that, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. And, you know, here's a spiritual contrast also. You know, the Bible, you know, we read in certain sections where the church is made up of many members. See, and if we're still preaching to those who are spiritually in the milk, then they're warring more in the flesh than they are in the spirit. And so then they, they can be uh, uh, a stumbling block or a, a division or an envy or strife for even those that are trying to grow in the, in, in the church. So the idea of preaching or the idea of getting behind here is to get everybody on the same mind the mind of Christ, right? It's not just to give you, there's, there's going to be milk sermons and you're always going to sprinkle milk with meat. But you know what? Uh, if I drink some milk now, I still want a steak every once in a while, right? But my son, when he was a baby, that's all he wanted. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting how babies are. Earlier this week, my wife made a beef stew and man, I chowed that sucker down. It was just so, so good. And my son didn't want any of it. Because, you know, even though he's starting to eat meat, there's times when babies just don't want any meat. You know, I don't know if you've noticed any time between the ages of one and three, every once in a while they just don't, they, their body just rejects it because they just can't handle it the same, right? It's because they're still growing. That's how we are when we're growing in, in the church. It, turn to Romans, just one page over to Romans 8. And you're going to be in verse 1 there. It says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So let's make that distinction. I want, and we're going to continue reading, but real quick, because in Romans 7, he says that it was, it says, for I know that in me, that it is my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And he's talking about how it's the flesh that sins. But you know what? When you're walking in the flesh, you're still the sinner. Let me just, because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because we don't want to get into the point where people are using that as an excuse. You know, remember when you were a little kid and uh, you'd get in trouble, you're like, the devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't make you do it. He influenced you, but you're the one that did it, by the way. So just remind you that we're sinners and that we do have good and bad influence, but the one that sins and is held accountable for their actions is you. You know, me, you, my children, they're the ones, right? It says, 
uh, who walk not after the flesh but the Spirit. Verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they are... Uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. So the only way to be in the Spirit is to have that faith, right? Uh, or one of the ways, not the only way, but that's the way. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And then we'll read in verse 11 right there, it says, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. And so the thing that we see here is that we, it's an action, right? We have to walk in the Spirit so that the Spirit can quicken us. You know, and if, but if we're carnally minded, then we're going to be distracted. And so the challenge is, you know, how much time are we going to spend in the Word? How much time are we going to spend in prayer this year? Well, you know, people are going to write goals and, you know, I've made the mistakes of, I'm going to read X number of chapters a day and, or if you read four chapters a day or X, you know what? Honestly, my goal is just to be in the Word every day. And, and, but, it, it, but it's not like this cheapy goal, like when you grab a, like a devotion, you read one verse, and then you read a devotional. Nothing against devotionals, but sometimes they discourage you from just being in the Word. But the goal is to be in the Word for a specific amount of time. You know, 15 minutes, one hour, two hours. Look, if you have five hours in the day left, take it and run with it. I know it's uh, weary, but that's the way we get into the meat. And, you know, what's interesting is the Bible talks more about reading than studying. So, you know, it's not just sitting there and trying to figure it out. Just read the Word. God's going to speak in the Spirit if we look for the Spirit, right? So we have to then, look, this year in 2019, what should be your goal? It should be to walk in the Spirit and fight with the, the flesh, right? It's to war against the flesh and, 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 and cast the, the flesh down. The Bible says casting the imaginations, right? Casting them away. Then we're going to look at, you know, kind of the milk and the meat of the whole thing. If you turn over to Hebrews, uh, uh, yeah, turn to Hebrews 5, and I'll read for you while you're turning there to 1 Peter 2. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies. It's funny because all these things are the ones that in the beginning were saying, I couldn't talk to you because there's envies and strifes and divisions. Well, where do we, how do we avoid that? We lay aside malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. See, it's not just, it's okay to be in the milk, but what does it say? That, you may, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye, uh, if so be ye have tasted that, that the Lord is gracious. And so 1 Peter 2, and we're going to be in Hebrews 5, is telling us, look, just like a new baby, you know, a new baby has no malice. They have no guile, no hypocrisies, no envies. They don't speak evil. You know, they just, all they do is make a bunch of noises. My son has this thing. You know, my daughter, when, uh, it's just on a side note, but it's just really cute the way babies put themselves to sleep. My, ba my, my little girl, when she would put herself to sleep, she'd, she'd do a fake cough, like, <laughs> and it wasn't really that bad. But my son, being the boy that he is, the way he puts himself to sleep is, <laughs> that's really annoying. But that's about as annoying as it gets, but there's no malice or guile or hypocrisies or envies or all evil speakings. But it says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, right? Have you ever seen a, a newborn baby when they know they're going to get uh, breast milk or milk? You know, they like almost like grunting like little uh, pigs. <laughs> you know, that's what God wants. He wants us to be excited. It says, so that ye may grow thereby. And then you're there in uh, Hebrews 5, 11, it says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become 
such as have need of milk and not strong meat. And, you know, obviously we're not going to go into this whole thing, but here he's warning them. He says, look, you're the ones that need, you're the ones that should be the teachers, but now you have need of milk and not of strong meat. And really what I, what I, I think the good point to make here is, look, find the things that we are spiritually in the milk and let's get some of that meat. It says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. In other words, there's certain things that I understand better than others in the Word of God. So maybe I need to spend more time on the things that I don't understand so good so that I can get uh, strong in that meat, right? It says, But strong meat belongs to them that are full of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both, both good and evil. And then what it is, it's going to give you the ability to make proper decisions. You know, the purpose of goals is if you're making a goal is you're making a decision to do something, right? You have a a goal to lose weight or a goal to spend more time in the Word. Well, what are you trying to do? You're trying to discern from how you're going to spend your time, right? And really, what we're at the end of the day, what we're really saying is we're trying to discern how we are, we're going to spend our time, whether we're going to be using it's a good use of our time or an evil use of our time. I mean, it really comes down to that. I mean, people can say whatever they want, that they're focused on, the world says that they're focused on business goals or, you know, spiritual goals or family goals or whatnot. But really what it is is time is is the, uh, the, great, um, the great coin, right? The great currency. Because it's the currency that God's given us an abundance of, but you know, we don't know when he's going to take it away. Uh, we, we can't recover it. It's not like, you know, if I lose some money in my pocket and I could feel bad about it, I might be able to recover it, right? If, my, if it didn't get, like, uh, washed away or didn't fall out. I might be able to find that. You ever found like five dollars in your pocket after years and you're like, oh man, this is great. I have an extra five dollars. But time's not like that. You know, time's not like, it's not in a pocket where you, where all of a sudden you're like 18 again. You're like, oh man, if I could just be 18 again, I, the things that I would do, well, you're not 18 again. You're whatever age you are. And what you got to do is then we have to discern both good and evil. Well, how do we discern the time? Where, where are we going to spend our time on? The good or the evil of the time? And so the thing that I want to, the, the thing we got to focus on is, well, if we're in the meat, we're going to be discerning the good and we're going to be growing. And if we're in the spiritual milk, then let's focus on finding that meat in the word, right? There's certain, you know, the Bible's great because you can just kind of follow its little clues to all these strong doctrines. I mean, if you just kind of look up, you can study it so many different ways. You can go verse by verse. You can go subject by subject. You can do a specific word. You can do specific study. And every time you're going to get more meat out of it. But if you're just kind of glancing through it and you're just doing a milk, well, then you're, never, you're always going to be more susceptible to walk in the flesh than in the spirit. You know, so let's look at, uh, let's just close this out. The spiritual, let's uh, look at what is the spiritual increase that comes from God's word, Right. What are the things that he's going to do or what are we looking for? We're looking for spiritual increase that comes from God's word. And so there in 1 Corinthians 3, 5, and you guys turn to Matthew 15, but let's just get, it says, who then is Paul? 1 Corinthians, I mean, uh, go to Matthew 15. I'll just read for you 1 Corinthians 3. It says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. So the meat that he's saying is, look. It doesn't matter who Pastor Cobb is or Pastor Enrique or anybody else in the congregation. It says, but ministers of whom ye believed. Who do we believe on? Jesus Christ. Even as the Lord gave to every man. He says, I have planted. This is a Paul, uh, Paul. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. See, this, ver this set of verses is used a lot for soul winning. And it, it is true. God gives the increase for soul winning. God gives the increase for the church. But you know what God also gives the increase for? For your goals for every year for your spiritual growth so that you can avoid walking in the flesh and you walk in the spirit. It says, so that neither he is planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Well, look, you know, one of the things that, that uh, it's interesting, the word labor is used in a more positive term than the word work. Now the word work in the Bible, you're going to find both negative and positive. But the word labor for the most part, for the most part, is positive. And what, it, and what I like it, what I like in it too, because I'm doing a study on that is, you know, you ever heard of somebody who's doing busy work or a busy body? You know, they're like, oh man, I worked really hard today, boss. Oh yeah, you did? Okay, well, what'd you do? Well, you know, I mean, I had to file these paper away and I had to stack this file here and I cleaned my desk and I threw out the trash. 
which is like, well, what did you get accomplished? Well, well, I mean, I just told you. Yeah, but how much money did you bring in or how many sales? Did, oh, well, did you call that list? Why well, I, I didn't get around to it. I was so busy. You know, the Bible says that we should labor and we should look for the meat. Well, the meat is, look, sometimes we're not going to be able to file these things away or throw out the trash. But you know what? I can make the phone calls or I can go to the door knocking or I can read the Bible or I can do the things that are more important. You know, it's interesting, the older you get, I'm not an advocate for being dirty. But every once in a while, life just gets so busy that if you have a little bit of a mess at home, you know, it becomes a decision of, am I going to clean up or am I going to read the Word? You know, maybe you should read your Word first and then clean up. Or just stay a little bit later to do the things that you need to do. But anyways, uh, you're there in Matthew 15. Let me just read for you uh, Psalm 92 real quick. Uh, it says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of, God, of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. So, you know, when we're in the Word, the Lord likens it to planting us by water. And he says that even when we're older, we're going to be fat and flourishing. Now, to each one is different. I'm not preaching a health and wealth. You know, if you want that, just go down to Joel Falstein Church. I'm preaching about God's increase, right? We're preaching about the spiritual increase. We're preaching about why we do the things that we do. Matthew 15, and we'll go there to verse 10, says, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth out in the mouth defileth the man, or makes it unfruitful, right? But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defi uh, defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard these sayings? Even the apostles worried about being people pleasers. Here's the apostles saying, Hey, do you know that you offended these guys? Now we know Jesus didn't care if he offended them, right? He's just going to preach the truth. And that's the attitude we should take is, you know, when we're strong, we're going to preach and hopefully people will hear us. But uh, just on a side point, it doesn't matter if you don't like the message. If the message is true from the Word of God, then who cares if you offend them, right? That's just on a side point. But he, said, but he answered in verse 13, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye... Also yet without understanding? In other words, we could also transpose that and say, but you, are you still in the milk? Do ye not understand that whatsoever entereth into the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out in, into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So Jesus is telling the apostles here, hey, get in the Word so that your heart is filled with the Word. And you ever meet, you know, uh, those people? I remember when we were younger. This happened more when I was younger. It still happens in the business world, but the younger they are, the more they cuss like a sailor, you know? They think that that's the really cool way to do business is, you know, every other word is, you know, a bleep and a bleep and a bleep and a bleep. And what happens is, you know, that's just what's in their, their heart. But then you ever meet someone who's just kind of growing? Forget, uh, you know, for a moment, let's just, even the world understands, right? Even the world understands that you need to grow up. Uh, that they're not, let's just say we're not talking about a Christian. Eventually you get to a point where you meet a mature business person and they don't like filthy language in their, in their boardrooms and they don't like certain jokes and they don't like certain things because they realize that it's unfruitful. Now, they might do it later. They, I think that they should be in the Word all the time, so they're not doing it like that, right? And they should get saved. But what I'm saying is the world even has an understanding that there's certain things that if you're going to be successful in life, if you're going to meet goals and you're going to do certain things, you have to be able to discern both good and evil, you know? You can't always be just goofing off and then expect to just be on spot or be ready to, to, to roll on whatever people ask you if you're not in the Word. Um, go to... Uh, Go to, uh, go to Ephesians 4. Go to Ephesians 4, and we'll, we're going to close this out. But, so we looked at the carnal versus the spiritual. We looked at the milk versus the meat. And I know those can be, I mean, it's basically the same thing, but I wanted to show you the verses that speak specifically on those things. We look at the fact that the spiritual increase comes from God's Word. And then uh, at the end of 1 Corinthians, while you're turning there to, first, uh, for, to Ephesians, 
the point I want to make here to close out is that all is yours if you will have it. But what's this all that is yours? Well, the Bible in 1 Corinthians, Paul closes out with what's, what's everything that's ours. It says, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So there's a two, the first thing we got to notice is we, we need to be aware not to be deceived or lied to. Remember two is there's, there's worldly wisdom and then there's God's wisdom. You know, and those are the things that we're going to focus on. It says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He that taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. And that word vain, unfruitful, right? Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ and God. In other words, what, what he's saying here, or the thing that, that, that I glean from this, is that he's saying, look, anything that's in the spiritual walk, if you're in the spirit, and you're in, growing from the milk to the meat, it's all for you. And I mean, we know we have the parable of the prodigal son. Remember the older brother was angry? And what did the father say? He said, look, I don't know why you're mad, and I'm paraphrasing for the sake of time. He said, everything I have is yours. Remember that? The, the anger, he's like, I, we don't have to kill the fatted calf. I don't have to give you the robe because you're here. It's all yours. And sometimes we're so focused on what's out there that we forget what's here and what's ours. He says, look, you're worried about Apollos and you're worried about uh, Paul and you're worried about, you know, all these things. You're worried about Cephas and the, and, and the world and life and death and things. I mean, it's all for your taking. You'll have, have it all. But the spiritual part, right? Because he did make that differentiation, um, that differentiation in the first verse is that there's that wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. So which one are we wanting to take? You know, go to Ephesians 4 real quick and we'll close out. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait, they lie in wait to deceive. See, there's going to be deceivers. There are deceivers, and we're going to run into them. Those, even if you're good in the Word, people will try to deceive you. You know, Pastor Cobb is not immune because he's been preaching for 54 years from the deceivers. And if he's not in the meat of the Word, guess what? He can be tossed to and fro. Uh, I'm not immune to it. Neither is my wife or any other member of this congregation, you know, just so I don't pick on anybody else and, and embarrass them. It says... Uh, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. So you got to grow up, right? Which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. In other words, we need strong church members, we need members that are moving from the spiritual milk in general or specific milk to the meat. Because it says each one of these will supply to our joints. We all are part of the members, right? Ephesians 5, just turn one page over. Ephesians 5, and then we're going to close out in Philippians. And I'll read two verses in between. Ephesians 5 says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And just go to Philippians 3 while I read for you Psalm 19.7, and I'm going to be in Proverbs. And Psalm 19.7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So, Remember, we were looking at both the deception and the wisdom. It says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart, uh, re rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. 
and you know, I was about to go in a song because I mean, obviously, those are the <laughs> we we know that that song, but it is sweeter, right? The challenge is that you you know if you grow, when you get a new believer and even people that have been that are that are growing in in Christ, two things should happen, right? You should want to be in the Word more, and number two, the world becomes less interesting. If you don't, if we're not seeing those things, I'm not saying that they're not saved because Romans four clears that up for us. That's not necessary. But what I'm saying is that they're not walking in righteousness. They're not walking in, in the spirit. They're probably still in the flesh. And the challenge with that is that if we want to create a great change in 2019, if we want to do great things for the Lord in 2019, it's not enough to just lead people to the Lord door knocking, soul winning, uh, you know, when we're in the grocery store. With, it's, we have to give people the meat. And they have to be willing to take the meat and grow, right? Because... I mean, we lead people to the Lord every week. They're not in here. And I mean, the great thing is they're saved, but they're not, you know, some of them probably went back to drinking or whatever sins that they were doing. And, you know, the thing is we should be moving away from the, the sins of the world into the Spirit. Let's look at uh, Proverbs 3, and then you're in Philippians 12, 3, verse 12, and we'll close out. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and le all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So the only way to not be wise in our own eyes is to be in the word of God, right? Let him direct our paths. In Philippians 3.12, and we'll close out with that, it says, Not as though I have already attained. You know, it's a good sign of someone who's trying to get out of the milk and wean off the milk spiritually into the meat. is someone who hasn't arrived. You know, the worst person to meet. And, and, uh, and if you've lived long enough, you've, you meet them every once in a while, you meet the person who's arrived. They just, they know everything, they've done everything, they are everything, nobody can do like them. That, that's like the worst person, right? Because the Bible says, no, not as though I have already attained, either we're already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I don't count myself to have grasped everything that I read. You know, as a matter of fact, this year, it's funny, last year I preached, that's what, I was just reviewing my sermons, and that's what prompted this one. Last year I preached on God Gives the Increase and 1 Corinthians 3, and a whole other message came out of those same verses, you know, just because God has now helped me apprehend something else. It says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. See, if I stay in the same message, I'm just in the spiritual milk. But I've taken something out of it. Now we're getting a little bit more meat in that same in that same work, right? And it's God's word. It's not me. I mean, I'm not. The, this is not anything new. It's not something that I I revealed unto myself, and I'm just really smart. Look, if you open First Corinthians three and read it enough, you're going to get all this out of it, probably more. It says, "I press towards uh, reaching unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in who Christ Jesus." Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. And I think that word otherwise, I looked it up, is interesting. Because basically it, it, it's a self-descriptive word. It's an otherwise, an other wisdom. If you're not having the wisdom of God, it's because you're otherwise preoccupied. You're, you're thinking of this wisdom and you're not looking at God, right? It says, and if anything be ye otherwise minded... God shall reveal these even unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. What's the same thing? Well, well the same thing is we're minding Christ, right? We want to have the same mind as Christ. Well, the only way is to wean off of the things that we're accustomed to. You know, for many, for many, many months, I read Psalm 139 because I love Psalm 139. It's just a great... And I just read it. I remember before I go to bed, I read it out loud. But... I, if I'm going to be in the same mind as Christ, well, there's a ton of other chapters and verses in the Bible. And then for, me, for a long time, I would read Proverbs, you know, based on the day, right? Has, has anybody ever done that? You know, Proverbs 1, day 1, Proverbs 2, day 2, which it's not a bad practice. If you do it now, do it. I'm just saying, but most people just do that. Well, you know, there's other books besides Proverbs in the Bible. You know, just look at the one before and the one after. Those are really good. Job, uh, Psalms. Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. I mean, just 
you, the whole Bible is great, but so people end up doing that, and what they're doing is that they're in the milk because what ends up happening is you're not tying it all together. See, if you only read Proverbs, you'll miss out on the foreshadowing of Christ in Proverbs. Because if you're reading in Genesis, you see a lot of Genesis in Proverbs. Or you might see a lot of, you know, the New Testament in Proverbs. Proverbs 11 is a great soul winning uh, uh, a chapter, but you can't see that if you're not, if you haven't read the entire scripture, if you haven't read the entire word. It's amazing how God has weaved all this truth into every one of his verses. You know, so the, the thing I want to close in is just, in 2019, I don't know, I mean, I look at goals differently, and I'm not against those that said all the goals, and I think all the rules apply. You know, if you're going to have goals, you should write them, and they should be specific. You've, hear, or you've heard all that. But there is, a, there is a, something to be said about the fact that I think the goals are just kind of like a, like a, they're kind of like a compass uh, at sea, meaning you know where you're headed, but the waves are kind of guiding you. Now, we're not going to be tossed about to every wind like, like, the, like this, the waving sea, but what we're saying is we're going to let the wind, you know, the Spirit of God guide us in that sea. Because what happens is, you know, you set a goal, and it's that I have never had a goal that came out exactly like I thought. It's just, and if anybody has, I'd, I'd be surprised. Exactly. What I mean is, like, you wrote that. I mean, and maybe if I were to look at all my goals, because I do have a lot of written goals, maybe there's one or two in there that they're right on the money. But what I'm saying is they never occurred in the time that I wanted or in the, in the, in the exact sequence that I wanted. But what, what has happened, though, is I have hit many goals, but the one thing I've learned is that I focus more on what, what is the fuel for the goals, right? The goals are just to help you stay focused, right? We have this map, and we, we, we scratch out where we're soul winning. It's not so much that we're, we're looking to fill out, you know, my goal is to fill out everything, but we need more laborers. But it's not so much that if I don't fill out this section, I'm not doing the, the work of the Lord. It's just to keep, keep us on task so we're not repeating ourselves, right? But the way that, that I look at weaning ourselves in 2019 is, okay, we have the goals, we have all this. But look, the focus is get in the meat and avoid the milk. Walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Because what happens is if you don't do these things, none of the goals matter. Because the goals are only as good as the execution. Well, the execution fails when you don't have the Spirit of Christ. Because, you know, that first day, man, January 1st, everybody's at the gym. Nobody's eating any bad food. Nobody's, you know, thinking bad thoughts. Nobody said a cuss word. I mean, they're, you're just good. And then comes January 1st, 12 o'clock p.m., you're already messing up. You, you, you already ate a piece of chocolate you shouldn't have eaten. You, you, you got mad at your wife. January 2nd, forget it. I'll just wait till January 5th so there, when there's 25 days in the calendar, right? Because that's how we do it, right? I'll start on Monday. January 2nd was Tuesday, so I'll wait till Monday to start. And then Monday comes, you're like, man, I already messed up. You know what? It's 31st. It's, some, it's a weird month. I'll just wait till February, and I'll just knock out the first three days and make them 25 even. Right? And then February comes around, 25, now you're in March. Next thing you know, it's December. You're like, this year I'm going to do it again. But the, the, the difference is, the reason people fail at that is because that we're not in the Word. The Bible says to meditate there in day and night. You know, one of the things I noticed is, if I can't hit all my goals, the one thing I do want to hit up is the Word of God, because at the end of the day, some, somehow everything else just kind of works itself out. Have you ever noticed that? The older you get... You have all these deadlines and all these urgencies and all these emergencies and all these things, and they work themselves out. It's just ama it's amazing if you just put your, your hands and your life in God's hands. I, I mean, and I mean hands, like your life in God's hands. He'll take care of the rest, and he actually says that in his word. I'm not, that's a whole other sermon. But wean yourself off the spiritual milk and into the spiritual meat. And he, that's a life-worthy life goal because... I don't care how much you read the Bible. Guess what? There's still stuff I don't understand. There's probably in 20, 30 years there's stuff that I'm not going to understand. But you know what? I understand a lot more than I did 10 years ago and 15 years ago. And, you know, whatever, whenever I, 20, 2005, I don't know, it's been like 13, 14 years since I got saved. But since then, I understand a lot more than I did then. So there's no reason to discourage me from going towards the, pressing towards the high calling, right, of Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for today. And, the opportunity to preach this message uh, on the second day of January. And uh, the goal behind the message is not so that people can think that it's a perfect thing to set goals and hit them all every day. 
that's just a, uh, impossible and, and uh, it's a goal where you're going to frustrate yourself and you're going to depress and you're just going to give up. But there is something to be said for getting the word every day. I mean, if you said it in your word that we can meditate there in day and night, then that's something we can do. And one of the things that, that is amazing about that is that the fruit from that is so much bigger and so much more abundant than anything else that we put our time and effort into. So help us to walk in the Spirit, to walk and learn in the meat, and to be not only in the meat for ourselves, but to also turn around and teach others so that not only we can go soul winning, but also that we can then help others disciple them so that there be more laborers. We know the laborers are few, but we can continue to work for more laborers if we just focus in this 2019 on your word and on doing the things that you've commanded us to do. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.